My name is Gianni Russo, a.k.a. Carlo, the infamous son-in-law from The Godfather. I'm now known as the Hollywood Godfather, and this is my story. Before all of the wins in my portfolio, I was a little boy diagnosed with polio. Experimenting with cures, I tried every one. Felt everything in my right, but my left was numb. Walking with a limp, like will I ever run? Once again, or is this it? Am I forever done? Living in the hospital was never fun. Some people were cool, but not everyone. Welcome, everybody. It's time for another Hollywood Godfather podcast. And thank God, my co-host, welcome, Jeannie Raymond. You're Hello, here thank you. Again. Hi there. It's always my favorite day of the week, Gianni, where we can uh, sit and catch up and you can... I feel like I'm. I get my own personal little education every week, and I know it goes out to so many mil millions of people. But it's. I feel like you're talking just to me, and I love your story. So I'm really well, excited to hear our topic today, or to ask you the question. Actually, well, I th I think you have the question exactly. So why oh yeah. Why don't we get into that and start the show? And I'm I'm I really can't wait because I'm going to shock people with this one. This you're not going to believe. Well, Gianni, your stories are always so great. It's always so fun to bring up a topic, and you are so sharp. I mean, I, I, I hope to live. My mom's 88 years old, so I, I hope to to get older and, and have my wits about me to remember stories the way you do, and because they're fantastic. But well, I, I have a... Well, I have I, such great memories, you know, of, of great oh, times. Right. And this, nope. this one in particular... This well, is so amazing to me. That's exactly right. And and your stories are ones that everybody wants to hear. So um, Patricia, and it says from Clark County, said she started listening to our podcast and she recalled an article. So she went back and looked it up. And Richard Johnson from page six. Oh, uh, the great guy. He the, did more he did more stories on me, this guy. You would think I was paying him. And yeah. and New York, you know, the New York Post is so well read. But Richard Johnson, if you're listening, thank you. And he and he does. He's a follower of the show, which is important too. Well, that's fantastic. And and that this Patricia remembered it and went back and looked that up. And so uh, we encourage all of uh, all of our listeners if you get a minute, which is something I always do when I'm listening to a podcast, I'll just go and look it up. But on um, she said. She read it and it was April 4, or excuse me, April 16th of 2018. It said Gianni Russo deleted Grace Kelly from his upcoming memoir, The Hollywood Godfather, out of respect. Can you tell us what that means? Well, I definitely could tell you. And it's so, it's so crazy because I probably, when I met Grace Kelly, was the only person who didn't know who she was. <laughs> And 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 the reason for it is because most people who who didn't read the Godfather, I mean the Hollywood Godfather, the book, I, I you know, I, and I always say, fortunately, I was put in a quarantine ward and uh, for polio, and we didn't have television, and we don't have you know in nineteen forty nine in the fifties they weren't exploiting movie stars, and there were, I, I didn't read. I was only six, seven years old, and I never knew who she was. Right. So now I come out. Let's go to that. Five years later, I'm on the streets. I'm sleeping in the bakery, working in the bakery, and getting up during the day and going selling ballpoint pens on the street. Again, I have no access to television. I can't read newspapers. So I don't know who Grace Kelly is. Oh, wow. Spin yeah. forward. Now it's in the 50s, and I'm working for a guy called Frank Costello, which most of the audience knows that. And he happened to own the Copacabana. He opened it in 1940. And I have to say, during my time being with this man until he died in 73, I met everybody you could think of. And, and I mean, we all know the story about Marilyn Monroe and all that. But see, Marilyn and I had a different situation with me because as I got older and was working for him when he went home, 
I used to go to New York Paramount. And my the audience has heard this a hundred times. I watched Some Like It Hot maybe 15 times. And the day I met her, I knew she was. But with Grace Kelly, it was so different. I met Grace Kelly with Frank Costello in the Copacabana. <laughs> oh, wow. And she was already a big star. She already did, you know, Rear Window. She won uh, the Oscar. I mean, she was a major, major star. And she was talking to Costello, who loved her. And one thing about Frank Costello, I have so much respect for him because, you know, the people I met with him, he took these these kids to him under his wing. And God forbid anybody abused him or they had any problems, they would call him. And Grace Kelly was one of them because what's funny, as I mentioned in some of our shows, they would have an envelope, you know, comment at the front door. And, and, every, and you know, when I got there, he'd say, go get the flowers for the table. And that meant the first time I went, I was saying, am I going to a flower shop? He started laughing. He said, no, 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 no. Just go to the Barbizon Hotel. It's on 62nd Street and Lexington, Hotel, uh, Lexington Avenue. Go to the second floor and you'll see the floor monitor up there because they had a curfew. Now, the Barbizon Hotel was part of the Barbizon finishing school for all these young debutantes to come and get groomed. And that's what it was. But all those girls wanted to go to the Copacabana and Costello wanted them there because I'm talking about Grace Kelly. I'm talking about Audrey Hepburn. I'm talking about every major star that became a star after leaving the Barbizon. They all knew to go there and he'd send a person before me. I don't know who it was, but I'd go there, give the money to the guy upstairs, and then the girls would come and I'd take a cab over to him. It was always a couple of blocks. He always told me to take a cab. He thought I took a cab over. I kept the money, put it in my pocket. But I, I And I would bring these girls. And he said to me one night, he says, do you know who you'd picked up tonight? I said, oh. no. He says, you don't recognize her? I said, who, which one? And he said, the blonde there. I said, no. He said, I see her a lot with you. Because he, he used to be at Toot Shores every day. Toot Shores was the watering hole of all the celebrities. In the middle of the afternoon, they'd start coming in. And Toots was the host of the hosts in New York. And a girl like Grace Kelly would be there when she came to New York. Now, understand Grace Kelly, just for our audience, they don't know who she is. She was a movie star. And while her, she made three major motion pictures, she won an Oscar. I mean, she was nominated for Rear Window. And at the age of 26, she marries Prince Rainier. <laughs> I knew, I knew that she went on to be royalty, so that's why she cut her career short. But 26 but, years old. Wow. But how, but how about this? And I, I, I'm i talking to her every night. You know, not that I was sitting with them. Right. But, you know, if they needed cigarettes, I'd go get them. And then at the end of the night, I'd get a hail a cab. They'd get in and I'd make sure that I got in or I'd come back. That's, I mean, they used to call him Uncle Frank. Frank Costello to these girls knew they can go there, have dinner. And he wanted them there because Earl Wilson was there. Every every columnist was writing. And I, like I said, she was already a movie star. I didn't go to movies then. I never been, I never went to a movie. And I didn't watch television. So how am I going to know who she is? And she loved the idea because she said to, she said to Costello, he doesn't even look at me. He doesn't even know who I am. He said, I feel so. He said, well, he doesn't, you know, that I taught him right. He's, he's, you know, but we became friends because of the naivety. And as we go on with the story, you're not going to know where it goes. 
So now, you know, I'm I'm never sitting with them. If they wanted something, he'd call me over. Or if he had to leave the table and there wasn't a man at the table, he'd say, sit at the table. Because he didn't want nobody coming over and bothering him. Bothering him. Wow. But surrounded now was Earl Wilson and uh, uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. All the columnists would write that, you know, Grace Kelly was there. Audrey Hepburn was in there. And that's what he wanted. I didn't read the newspaper. I couldn't read. I still can't read. <laughs> and I wasn't even interested in reading it. No. So now, and I, I'm sitting with her, and she said, you won't be seeing me for a while. I said, why? So I'm taking my mother, my maid of honor, and 30 of our family members on a cruise to Monaco. I'm getting married in Monaco. I said, what? She says, yeah. She said, did you ever hear of Prince Rainier? I said, no. <laughs> Certainly didn't know about him. He no, don't know, know the birth of the no. prince. So she just thought all of that was great. And then when you, she came back later on in life, I was still with Costello, and I'm a little older. And now she has a baby girl, Carolyn. You know, she. And, and for, well, I don't get too too far into it yet. But this is what was going on with me. But she loved the fact that that was so. She thought I was being coy about it. Then she really found out I didn't know who she was, <laughs> which yeah. made it even a bigger. You know. Yeah. Uh, it was just fun. But well, why I'm saying it, the opportunities for us to even have this conversation would be insane because my life with Grace Kelly went on after she became the princess. And now I'm going with Frank Sinatra to the Monaco Red Cross Ball. I don't know about this. I'm 18, 19 years old. We just got we just got JFK into the White House. And he's come to Monaco with me. And I did. Why wouldn't I go? And I tell Costello, he said, okay, go with me. You know, have fun. So th this is how naive I was. And I get there. She now is Princess Grace of Monaco. She is the Mr. Ceremony of the Red Cross Ball there. It's the hottest ticket to get oh, wow. in Monaco. And I'm going now, to me, it was like I'd go to the Grand Prix, then I'd go to a film festival, because I was interested in films, and then we'd go to Wimbledon, and I was living like it was a socialite. <laughs> Your life has been a lot of fun times. Oh, and yeah, that's all it was. And Sinatra... He couldn't believe it because now he thought he was going to introduce me to Grace Kelly. I didn't tell him I knew her. I didn't know her. I just, I met her through Costello. So now we're at the, a private reception for all the biggest donors and him being one of them. And we're there. And here comes Grace Kelly and Prince Rainier. And they walk up to us. And we're with a lot of heavyweight people. And I'm just you know, standing in the back. And she looks over, she said, Johnny, I didn't know you were coming. And he looked at me, he said, how do you know her? I used to, he used to get crazy, Sinatra. That's and Prince, crazy. And oh, Prince Rainier. Oh. And, I'm, and I'm, I met Prince Rainier because he used to come with her on trips to New York. And they always went to the Copa. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. And I know there's so many people out there who who really disliked me and despised me, especially when I tell stories like this. But it, got, it, gets, it gets worse and crazier with her. But the thing is that, you know, we I just saw her that way. But if you analyze who I was at the time, it wasn't naive. I just wasn't exposed to it. Right. In the hospital that I was in, Bellevue, there was no television. I wasn't watching the news clips. Right. I wasn't even the only radio I was listening to I got when I was seven. And all I did was listen to Sinatra music. I didn't listen to the news. I didn't know what was going on. But And you, know, you wouldn't have cared at that age. You no, know? and I didn't care. Who, who cares about the news? You know, right. I would I'd change the station and get more music. That's, That's all. Right. That was my outside connection to the world. I was there for five years. 
So as That's time went on, I got to know him more. And we every year we were at the Red Cross Ball. And unfortunately, and I say unfortunately, because then when she would come to America, she always traveled by ship. Oh, wow. She wouldn't fly. Even when she was going to get married to the oh. prince. Oh, that's she, right. She was 26. He was 32. She went on. There's two ships. There were sister ships, the Independence or the Constitution. And a friend of ours, believe it or not, owned the shipping line, Pennington shipping line. Not my friend, but Costello's friend. You know, that's how I went. I got to be going on ships. And I always remember her saying, you know, oh, you're going to love the tr cruise. You're going to love this. And that's how I got into cruising. So spin forward, I mean, it, it gets even crazier now. Because, you know, it's, you know, I, I and, and some people have read my book. I was involved in getting the votes. I was a messenger. only. Not that I did it, me personally. I was a messenger during the primary to try to get JFK nominated to be the nominee for the presidential election. And that it was the end of the 50s, the beginning of the 60s. So now he gets to be president. Joe Kennedy made a promise that they were going to invade Cuba. All that never happened. And then two years go by, nothing's ever happened. And then there was an assassination. Mm -hmm. And I had to leave. Because he said, I want you out of the country. So I get, I get on the Constitution or the independence. I've even forgot which one it was, but it was one of those two ships because they always arranged it. And I get on the ship and they take me up to my suite, which was always amazing suites up on new deck. And I used to call it a boat and they used to get mad at me. It's a ship, Mr. Russo. It's not a boat. It's a ship. That's okay. So there's one time I go to my suite. It's like the third or fourth time I've been on the boat, a ship. A ship. And I, I get... I get to my room and there's a little girl playing on the patio next to mine with her nanny or it looked like a nurse. You know, I didn't know that what a nanny was. So I said, oh, wait a minute. And, and Pennington was a good friend of mine. He was the captain and his chief person knew me personally. And I said, get me another room. I don't want to be here with, with, with this girl, this little kid here in the morning. They said, oh no. Uh, but her Highness re requested you get this room. Uh -huh. It's Her Highness. Ooh. And it was Grace Kelly. It was baby Carolyn. That's, you could not make this stuff up. Her Highness wants you next door. I love it. That's wild. But this gets even crazier now. I'm pulling out. We're going under the Verrazano Bridge. And they said the president was shot in Dallas. Costello got me out. They knew what was going to happen. He got me out of the country. On a boat with her. On the ship. And um, but now figure this: the first night on the on going out, they announced the president was shot, not dead. So we was solemn. We we're all we we're at the captain's table. She was there. And, you know, it was a very solemn night. People were dancing, but the music, they were, you know, until we found out. Then the next day, the Telex newspaper said he was dead. Well, you can only imagine. We had five more days on the ship. Oh. And I thank God that she was on the ship because a lot of people weren't even going to the dining room. Oh, I mean, wow. He, he was so well-liked. And it was, it was like a, a crazy situation, but it gave me a time you know, to talk to her and bond with her. And we became very close friends. And, you know, and it was forever. In fact, when I found out, and most people don't know this, you know, she died at 52. Oh, you're kidding. Did you know that? No. No. She was married. It's ironic. She got married when she was 26. She was married for 26 years, and she died at 52. 
Oh, my. A tremendous car accident. Oh, that's awful. And she didn't like to drive. Her and Stephanie went to a doctor right outside of Monaco in De Cap I know right where they were. And coming across on that road is very, very dangerous. And she's not used to driving. Right. Stephanie had a sedative or something, so she had to drive. Oh. So the car went to this one curve, which I knew it well. I was in back seats of cars going over, and I was always like saying, slow up on that curve coming up. She went off the cliff 30, oh 30 feet. It took hours to cut her out of the car, and then she died a day or two later in the hospital. Imagine that. So now I'm over there, mourning JFK, mourning her. And it was like so bizarre. And, you know, later on, I got to know Princess Carolyn, you know, and, and, and her brother Albert. And it's because I just kept going, I, which I still go. I like to go to Monaco. I like to Kim Fong, Con Philip. In fact, I was privileged to have one of my movies there that I produced. I don't know if you know that. No, what movie? The, uh, well, it was any given, no, not any given, um, for which he stands. Really? Yeah, oh. and uh, William Forsythe was in it, uh, Robert Downey, uh, Robert Davi, uh, Sally Kellerman. Big movie. I wrote it, produced it, and they picked it as a, a, a foreign entry. But why wow. I'm saying it, and you know, it, all this is uh, ties to it. So when I wrote the book, I never mentioned Grace Kelly. So Richard Johnson, who I got to know well enough, you know, he heard about, you know, her being at the Copacabana, and he knew that, you know, and he asked me, he said, why didn't you mention Grace Kelly? You had such a good friendship with her. I said, I couldn't talk about her. Because mm. you know, the way she died. Oh, yeah. She, she was angelic, basically, to me. And there yeah. was a lot of rumors about her. But I don't believe them because, you know, she, she got married. Her, a third movie didn't even come out yet. And she already won an Oscar with Clark Gable. <laughs> Country wow. Girl. I mean, Rear Window was an amazing, I had to see it eventually. Because, you know, I didn't go to movies and, and, and it was already out of the movie theater. And I wasn't watching television until later on in my life. I never watched television. I didn't care about television. I watched the news in the morning get out. But the thing is, to think of having her and knowing her the way, I knew her just as a person. I knew her right. as a, a girl that went to the Barbizon finishing school. Her family lived in Philadelphia, very big in construction. And they sent her to get groomed. And I mean, the story just goes on and on and on. But uh, I think we should take a commercial. Yeah, we should. Yes, I, I turned. I didn't want to interrupt you because it was a fascinating story. But I've got a couple of questions. So let's take a quick break and, and come right back to it. All right. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. You know that, please. Mr. Russo is probably the most uh, interesting man I've ever sat with in my life. Unbelievable. Still unbelievable. I consider Gianni like Forrest Gump, right? The, the most interesting man on the planet. He has achieved so much in his life, and he has proven that time reveals the victorious. We're basically bringing Gianni Russo's life to, to rap music, if that makes any sense. You know, I'm painting a picture of this guy's life through rap music the best way that I know how. We're trying to encapsulate his life in, in segments, chapters if you want to call them that. And Gianni's story's crazy, but then Joel as an artist being able to articulate it, that's also crazy. Everything that you're hearing, this isn't a rapper that's making up something that he wished would have happened. These are things that have happened, that are documented, that you can check on, that you can Google. For you to hear about his life this way and to understand that these are facts and not fiction, you listen to it, you're gonna say, no one man could have lived this life. You have to say that. I've said that, I still say that. For me, it's very special because it's something that was never done before. I would just tell people that haven't heard it or about to hear it, 
if you could watch a movie about the world's most interesting person, would you watch it? This is that movie. You'd want to watch that. Okay, we're back. All right. Well, it's an amazing story. I mean, my goodness, that's what a tragic end to her life. And, and how old did you say she was? She had been married 26 years when she... She, she got married at 26 and died in 52. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's, that's terrible. And, so, mean, and, and the fun I had with them, even with the kids, they, and I, I, my, my retention is ridiculous. See, the municipal Monaco... Is, is like it's a, a it's like the United Nations in New York. The municipal is in the south of France, but to get to Monaco, you got to go to the municipal and go up the hill, and oh. you have to, you have to have a credential. Well, there was a restaurant that I used to go called Finocchio, like Pinocchio, but Finocchio. And they would call and say, you know, if you want to join us for lunch. This was her aide, Sam telling me to come have lunch with her and the kids. Rennie would be there sometimes from that. But I'd go up there and and I and it's funny because I learned a dish that I learned it there called penne rabbiato, means made at the pan. It's a spicy penny sauce, but it was amazing. And I learned it there. And I always remembered we'd all have it. But I mean it's how could I be reflecting on this woman's saint? She's like a saint. Think about it. I don't know who she dated prior, right. but you know, at 26, she's already made three motion pictures, won an Oscar, and now she gave up acting. And her last film on her honeymoon was released, and she got nominated again. Oh my gosh. I don't think I've ever, unless I saw her act in something that I didn't realize it was her. I do know what she looks like and stunning, beautiful lady. But, but out of the three movies, I had to see them. If you only see one, see Rear Window. Okay. Unbelievable. Unbelievable mystery. But uh, anyway. I'll, I'll check it out. Well, you know, the nice part about that, like you said, um, she could have a real conversation with you and you knew the real her not the person that's putting yeah. on a good show or or putting the best foot forward just a real person so that had to be but and, and you know what you're saying she never turned into anybody else but the, who she was and i think her innocence like marilyn's innocence but marilyn's had a very low esteem of herself she didn't yeah. go to finishing school you know she was in an orphanage right and some people, you know, took advantage of her early on, and they made her a movie star and a sex symbol. She had the contrary. Yeah, what, what, right. Married there. woman at twenty six, and uh, and I, I only only know her like a saint. She was angelic to me, and very never a swear word, nothing. Didn't dress sexy, none of that stuff. And and you know I I that's the one thing with Costello, I have to say one thing, the women that were around him, and he was so loyal to his wife, a gentleman. These women, if I didn't take them home in a cab, somebody else would. He always made sure they got to their hotels, and then when she came, she was always staying at the Waldorf because she wanted to see him. And now by that time, you can imagine when she came, the entourage was insane. Right. But, you know, it's uh, that's why there's certain people that, you know, I was so privileged to meet. And then when, when I heard about this question, and I was asked a question so many times, why don't I talk about Grace Kelly? I have such great fond memories of her. Right. And to, to leave us so early... I know that's awful. Who who was she in the accident with? Her daughter Stephanie, the youngest did, daughter. Did she live? Not Carolyn. Oh, she lived. She oh. lived. But she's still not right. Oh. She was with her mother and she knew her mother was driving and didn't want to drive. No, there was only there's only three children. You know, Carolyn is the oldest, Prince Albert, now he's the head of it all. And then Stephanie. And I don't even know where Stephanie's alive now, right now. If I, I, you never hear about her. You know, I don't want to ask anybody. Right, right. But, uh, That's amazing. 
but it's uh, when you start to think of the relationships, even with Dorothy Kilgallen and Marilyn, Costello had such a vast collection of people, starlets and columnists, and he treated everybody the same. He had a private bathroom up in the lounge of the Copacabana. And I go to I go to the same place right now. When when you come to New York, I'm going to take you to where the Copacabana was. It's called Avra, A V R A, and they just changed the street address because it used to be 10 60th Street. Now I think it's four. They moved the doorway up or something. But anyway, he has the bathroom is still there next to the bar where he gave you the key so you didn't go downstairs where the Copacabana was, where all the big bathrooms were. And, you know, I can imagine how many starlets and society people, and I still sit in the same booth, booth 15 when I go there, and I reminisce. Sometimes I go there by myself and just sit there, and, you know, I had this privilege when I was, you know... So young. 13, 14, 15 years of age. I'm seeing, you know, every major star in the world. Right. You know, the Copacabana. That's great. Well, yeah, I, I think of the things, and I I heard of an article in, um I believe it was in the New York Times a week or two ago, saying um, parents should ignore their children more. And it, it went on to say, um, you know, kids should learn to, go to somewhere, exactly what you did for Costello. Go sit in a room, mind your P's and Q's, behave yourself and learn how to sit there and, and just observe what's going on around you without having to be entertained and, you know, just to just learn to cool your heels a little bit. And You know, this is, it's so funny because, you know, I, I got motivated to write my book out of frustration. I didn't want to write a book because I, first of all, I, didn't, you know, I, I really disclosed a lot of things. Yeah. And with my lawyers, they eliminated a lot of things because the statute of limitation was still not over. And <laughs> I had a lot of friends of mine that would go to jail for what I was writing. But I wrote the book for the same reason. Because every time I saw my kids or my grandkids, they had a tablet in their hand, they'd walk in and don't even look up and say hello to you. Yeah. And that I blame my kids because they're the ones teaching the manners. And not right now, I, I I I won't name who they are, but I only have two grandchildren come to see me. Oh. Because they respect me. Yeah. They, commit, they hug me, they kiss me. They oh. know they have to shut off their phone. If they're here for an hour or for four hours, I want their attention. Right. I you see know people. Okay, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. But I see people out to dinner with their kids. The whole family's on their phone or a tablet, and they're not even talking to each other while they're out. It's That's cool. exactly right. It's like, why did you go out to dinner if you're all sitting there just like this across from yeah. like, it's, it's so crazy. Order in. Yeah, you're exactly right. I've got a little granddaughter. Her name is Reese, and she is, oh, every time I call my daughter, she says, Grammy, you'll come get me? And I was like, oh, boy. And I go and get her and I was, she was doing something and I was going to take a picture of her. And she said, put your phone down. She's two. Put your phone down because she wanted my full attention, which she was but, getting, but I was trying no, to video that's, her. That's but, nice though. No, I mean, see, and, and, see, and you giving her that attention, she it's, she's going to be a better person for it. Well, it's, I that, think kids need to spend time exactly. with adults. Unfortunately, in our society, most adults are working. The mother's oh, working. Yeah. The father's working. They're not even having dinners together. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's crazy. I'm, I'm inducing something now with my company, MJ Licensing, which owns everything quarterly owned. And I can't mention because the deal's not done yet. But we're getting together with a major chain restaurant. And we're introducing... Sunday dinner with the family in that restaurant. The whole chain of the restaurant. Oh, you're kidding. And not only are we having all our quarterly owned foods and, you know, everything, while we're doing it, we're showing a family version of The Godfather. 
Oh, wow. That's and it's amazing. A, and the, it'll the have rest, to be a short one. <laughs> oh, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no, you can block. Them. You know, it's funny. The way The Godfather was written, I mean, most there's great messages. There's a lot of, there's so many ways to cut that violence out. Yeah. We're doing it. And That's Paramount's amazing. loving it. And because it's going to be a whole rejuvenation. And this chain is over 480 restaurants just in the United States. Wow. I can't yeah. wait. And I think it's going to be a great, great launch. Is there going to be any out my way? Oh, yeah. Oh, they're, they're all over the place. Oh, yeah. That's definitely. amazing. Well, no that's beaten. awesome. Yeah. Well, and, well, and you say they're, uh, they're not sitting down for dinner and stuff like that. I know everybody's so busy, but I am so proud of my daughter. She's got, um, she, with her husband came three darling children, but they sit down every night for dinner, you know, and I, I'm so impressed with her. And it's a big deal. It is a big deal to no, sit it, down it, and talk to your kids. I'll tell you, and she'll be rewarded for it in the end. Yeah. She will. Yeah. I, I, I see so. it just with my own kids who has it, who don't have it. They're not the same. Right. And a lot of those kids, I mean, it's, they're not being neglected out of because they're not loved. No. It's a necessity. They're working, so they can't do it. They have right. to pay rent. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, I was raised where mothers didn't go to work. You know, yeah. I'm a guy, you know, my grandmother didn't have a job other than her job was to keep the family together and cook all day long. Your grandma? My grandma used yeah. to get up with my aunt to make bread in the morning. Well, I you know, to the storm board bread. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, you know, you always talk so much about her and it's it's so neat because you talk about her as much as you do even more than your parents. She was such my a... Parents, my parents, I don't talk about my parents at all. Right. But, but your grandma, she, she was such a huge part of your life. And But that's what I'm saying, see? Yeah. And that, that indirectly is saying exactly what we're talking about. You know, my father had his own way. My mother was crazy. And... Uh, my grandmother, who, who gave me a hug and a kiss, and that's why I remember my grandfather too, you know. But uh, it's important. And anybody listening to this, try to sit down once a week. And if if, oh. the, if the grandkids are being dropped off to you, what a privilege. What oh, a privilege. Exactly. No. That's, that's exactly right. Well, uh, I think we need to take another quick break, and then we'll just finish off our thoughts of, of Grace Kelly that's and call it a night. Well, while we're doing the commercial, find out where you and I are going to be now the, 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 at the Burbank Marriott. Get the dates. Okay. We should invite the audience. Right, we'll be right back. We're going to a All commercial. Right. Great. Me from South Philly here. I'm going to tell you, I had one of the best Sunday dinners in a long time. I'm going to tell you why. Right here. Corleone, fine Italian, brother. This stuff is the real deal. Now, I know what you're thinking. Everybody knows me out there. They know I make my own sauce. I make my own gravy. I make my own pasta. I don't buy this stuff in the store. However, however, I made an exception. Why? Because my friend Johnny Russo out there, I know what he's capable of doing. I know what he's about. He's about quality. So I said, I got to take a shot. And I'm glad I did. Because, see, I've had dinner all over the world. But this one, this product, brings me back to Italy. We got the olive oil. And I've lived in Italy, okay? I've lived in Calabria, I've went to Sicily, I've been in Messina, I've been to Palermo, I've been everywhere. And this oil reminds me of an old Italian couple that my father used to buy olive oil from. They used to live in the mountains and they used to make their oil pure, pure from their own olive oil. This is it, this is it. It brings me right back to that. And you don't need a lot. You put a little bit on your salad, you marinate. It's, I mean, come on, you, you can figure it out. This is the real stuff. I also got their arrabbiata, okay? Again, I don't buy this stuff, but I made an exception. I'm glad I did. I highly, highly, highly encourage you to try this stuff. You won't be sorry, okay? Give it a shot. You go to Corleone Fine Italian. You order it. It comes to the door. And then all we got to do is put it together. And I'm sure you can look it up. And if you don't know how to cook it, you ask me. And I'll be over for dinner. Enjoy. Salute. Okay, you... we're back. All right. And I want to make another message that you don't even know about. You've been invited and you're coming, fortunately. Jeannie and I will be at 
the Burbank Marriott Hotel. It's called the Hollywood Show. We'll be there the 18th and 19th. Jeannie will be joining me both days. But on Saturday in the afternoon, we're going to do a live broadcast from there about our podcast. So you're going to go to the Hollywood Godfather podcast while you're at the show. Stop by the booth. We'll interview you. You'll be a part of our show. Meet Jeannie in person. I'm going to meet her for the first time in person. That's right. That's going to be so fun. Oh, this is, Gianni, you're, you're crazy. I know. I'm like, oh, my gosh, what am I doing? I'm so excited. I can't wait to meet you in person. I figured you're going to be there. Why not? We'll do it. We'll shoot the show there. Well, what a there. great idea. Absolutely. Oh, my I gosh. Well, like, that's fantastic. Good night, everybody. Thank and you please, so much, Gianni. Stay safe. God bless you. And we'll see you on the radio. That's right. Be sure to watch for us, like our show. Um, we're on follow us on Instagram and everywhere you can uh see our thing. If you'll leave us a nice review and share it with a friend. Have a great night. Perfect. Have a good night. And that was that. But I'll be back. No regrets, no complaints. Lived a life with no restraints. The little kid they all counted out. Proved them all wrong, that's without a doubt. Laying there with my left side numb. Five year bout with polio, but yes, I won. From standing all corners like how many pens you want to living in a bakery. Then opening my own restaurant. Of course, I had some help along the way. Friends like Frank Costello that I miss each and every day. Things from many years ago still resonate.